the lamb that was slain has brought us redemption, atonement, salvation, and we're happy the fullness of the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're always blessed in the FCT Deep Alive Bible Church, and uh, we will continue to get more and more and more and more in Jesus' name. A louder amen. amen. Our Father and the Lord arrived on Friday, and straight we went to our campground in Gawabe. And put your hands together for Jesus. And I'm glad to announce that Gawabe has become a miracle center. This FCT will witness great, mighty miracles rise from Gawabe as our Father will be ministering from there very, very soon. The whole world will receive the blessing of God very soon from the city of Abuja, Gawabe, Deeper Life Campground. Put your hands together for Jesus. The status of our campground has changed before our Father with the anointing and power stepped in there. And not just there, he prayed for us. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Yesterday we were with the youth, youth, DLS, 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 YPF, Yowikan, and other youth all over FCT. It was a wonderful time at the National Christian Center. All our youth have received empowerment, anointing, and great, great miracles. Amen. And right here now, today, who's turn? Who's turn? Our Father in the Lord is here with the anointing and power. And get ready, get ready, receive your blessing. You are welcome, sir. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, is here to minister to us with the anointing and power. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. The hour for your word to penetrate every heart. We're asking, Lord, that the word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. That our spirit, our soul, our body, our life, our destiny will receive by turning around by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn our eyes towards heaven towards Jesus Amen. and towards the destiny you are preparing for every one of us in Jesus name Amen. I pray Lord that you take away our limitation limitation to this angle to this angle to that one and to that one and give us a broad view of who Christ is of what Christ has come to do and what Christ will effect in every life and confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. We're coming to Romans chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In verse 9, it says, Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Then in verse 10, it tells us, It says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. In verse 11, it now brings up everything in summary. And it says, and not only so, but we also joy. We rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have received the atonement. We're talking about the atonement today, the atonement of Christ, 
that he made on the cross at Calvary. And he made that for everyone, for you, for me, for everyone on earth. But it says we have to receive, we have to receive. We receive the atonement. And when it says we, who is he talking about? He's talking about those who understand the importance of his sacrifice, the importance of his substitution, and the importance of the salvation he brought to the rest, to the whole world. The salvation is for everyone. The atonement is for everyone. The redemption, the reconciliation is for everyone. But there are people that will have to receive. You receive and then the effect of the atonement becomes yours. It tells us in First Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 3, it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4 tells us, who will have all men to be saved. He wants all men to get saved. He wants all men to benefit from the atonement that Christ made on the cross of Calvary. Atonement, already I read Romans to you. And you'll see that Romans chapter 5, it talks mainly about our soul, our spirit, our salvation and the cleansing that he does and the conversion that he does we were enemies against god but now he reconciles us to god and that reconciliation is the center of the effect of the atonement and he wants all men to be saved and all men to come to the knowledge of the truth in second peter chapter 3 verse 9 second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards words not willing that any should perish but that all shall come to repentance that all shall come to repentance because in coming to redeem in coming to repentance you come to redemption in coming to repentance you come to reconciliation with god in coming to repentance by faith you come to the righteousness of the lord that he purchased for us on the cross of calvary and he wants the eyes of your mind to focus on that repentance that righteousness that redemption, that reconciliation. There are people that only think of Christ when they are sick. There are people that only think of Christ when they have infirmity. They, they don't feel the leprosy of their sin. You understand? People who have leprosy, they don't generally have the feeling until the leprosy spreads in the whole body and then they have to be cast out of the midst of the people of God. And many people are not conscious of their sin, the presence of sin, the power of sin in their lives, the pollution of sin in their lives. They are not uh, conscious of the punishment, eternal punishment of sin in their lives. When they think about Christ, they think about their body. Healing for the body, that's good. Uh, that's the little minute part of the atonement that Jesus made the center of that atonement, the effect of that atonement is that you're conscious that sin will plague your life, destroy your life, and get you to hell, eternal punishment. And that first of all, in your heart, you look at Jesus and you know he made a complete atonement for your sin. And you want to turn, turn away from sin and turn away from darkness and turn to the Lord for the salvation of your soul. Healing is good. Healing gives us some ease over here on earth. But sin 
will damage our lives and send us to hell fire. That's the reason why, as we look at the atonement today, we're not just looking at healing. Healing, we can deal without that today. We can, but we cannot deal without salvation and without holiness, because it says, follow peace with God and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. A person can, can get healed and not see the Lord. Lord, eventually, if he's not free from sin, if he's not saved, if he's not cleansed, if he's not sanctified, if he's not holy unto the Lord, redemption for all through the atonement of Christ. That's what we are looking at today in the Word of God. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the redemptive atonement of Christ for all people. Number two is the regenerative atonement at Calvary for our propitiation. And then number three, we have the restorative atonement on the cross for true partakers. Look at number one. Number one is the redemptive atonement of Christ for all people in Leviticus chapter 17. Reading here from verse 11. Leviticus 17 verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. To make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh, that maketh, it, made, it makes, it will make until the time of the coming of the Lord. When the door of salvation will be closed to everyone, it says, it maketh an atonement for the soul. Again, we come back to Romans chapter 5. I was looking at verse 8 very uh, definitely now, for God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, God commendeth his love to us. While we were yet sinners, not while we were sick, not while we had problems of money, of finance, of uh, prosperity, poverty, he looked at us as sinners and he knew of all the things that happen to us in life. Sin is the most deadly, is the most dangerous, is the one, is the thing that will cast us away from his presence forever and ever. And it says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in verse 9, it says much more than being justified, not just healed, justified. The essence of the atonement of Christ is that he wants to bring us justification. He wants to bring us reconciliation with God. He says much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved. Not, it's not talking about healing. For the atonement, it says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Then in verse 10, it says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. Then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now. You see, the atonement is effective now on this earth. Some people say you can't know who will be saved until you get over there 
heaven? No. It says that now we have received the atonement. Look at this redemptive atonement of Christ. And we divide that to three parts. Number one, the complete atonement for all people. Complete. Satisfactory and sufficient that anyone on earth, on the planet earth, anyone can have the effect and the result of that atonement now, the complete atonement for all people.